This is part two of the second question of the 2013 September RT paper one, the practice paper for the Eastern Cape matric exam. We're gonna, we've already done the first part of our object. We're now going to finish off our object and do these remaining questions. We're going to continue where they ask us to write a Boolean method R. Now that's such so much nicer because they've actually told us a Boolean method, which we know straight away should be a function that returns a Boolean. And it must be called accepted. Uh, and that also answers the question about what we had to do with that accepted variable. And this will determine whether an applicant has been accepted or not. To be accepted, the applicant must be between four and six years, inclusive, so four, five, or six. And they must have paid their deposit. So let's have a look at the code for this. So we're going to create our function, which we're going to call accepted. And that will return a Boolean. There's no other real parameters that we really need for this uh, function, so I'm just going to call it like that. I'm going to press Control shift c so that I can get to the part where I can write the code for it. Now, I must write the part that must check if they are accepted or not. And that we remember, they must have made a deposit, so we're going to say if, and we can get the deposit from the if deposit field. So if deposit... If that is equal to true, then we know one of the criteria is correct. The other criteria that it must be, and, is the age must be between 4 and 6. And that makes it quite nice because we know that if age must be greater than equal to 4, and at the same time, if age must also be less than equal to 6. Remember, it's inclusive, so that's why we put the equal to signs in there. Now, if you remember, now this function hasn't been called f age. We actually don't have a value for f age because we haven't actually called calculate age. So just remember that when we use this accepted um, function in our normal program, we're probably going to have to call calculate age before it just to make sure that we've got the age in that f age variable so we can calculate it. Otherwise, it's going to always be zero because there's no actual in our constructor, if you remember. We didn't actually give an f age a value. So we must call this calculate age before we use the accepted function. So there, if those, if those conditions are all true, then our result must be true. So we return a true. And the thing about a Boolean function, you must always give the alternative case. So if it's not that, else if it's... N if any one of those conditions is not true, then result must equal to false. We must always return the true and the false when you're doing a function that's a Boolean type function. So looking at that, that's all we pretty much have to do for that one. So our accepted one is done. Now let's get to the next one. 5.1.5, get reason. We must write a method. Now they don't tell us if it's a function or procedure, which will return. Ah, oh, the moment they say return, then it gives us a clue that it should be a function, and returns the reason why an applicant was not accepted. So if they were, so it's obviously going to return some sort of text, tell us whether they were not the right age and that. Um, see conditions for acceptance 2.1.4. So they talk about the conditions there. So either they haven't paid the deposit or they are not the correct age. So it could be either one of those reasons. Here's a little tip. Though. If you've used your 10 minutes of reading time to read the paper, you would have actually gone through the question. I'm going to write down to the end and you'll see where they use it. And that's always a tip. If you're not sure what, how to display it or how it's going to be used, go look at the second part of the OOP question and see how this function is going to be used. And there I can see non-accepted. These are the reasons why they're not accepted. There's deposit not paid or incorrect age. And those are the only two that they actually specify there. Incorrect age, deposit has not been paid. So there we go. So that's what I'm going to return in my string format for this question. So let's go to this part. We're going to go and write a function called get reason. Is it reason? Yeah, it's only one reason because only one applicant. And that, we said, was going to return a string. There's no parameters needed, so I'm going to press Control shift c And now the reasons. Now, we knew, we know that it's either deposit not paid. Let's go back down here. Yeah? Deposit not paid or incorrect age. So I'm going to come here. So if I know that if deposit equals false, if that is, tr if that is the case, then I know that my result is going to be deposit not paid. 
and you can check that the spelling is like it is over there else if it's not that reason then we've got to check if the age is not between 4 and 6 in that case if the age or if age is less than 4 or if the age, if age, not for age, if age, is greater than 6. Now, I use the or because there's no number that can be both less than 4 and greater than 6 at the same time. So it's either one of these conditions. If either one of these conditions is true, so they were either less than 4 or they're older than 6, then our result will be the string incorrect age, like it says there. incorrect age okay now that technically means it's done I think we've covered everything and based on the question that we're going to get up later we've covered all our bases but if you look here you'll see this question is actually for seven marks because in the memorandum from the department they actually specify that we've also got to put if it's both of those cases then we've got to put both those conditions oh first of all let me just correct that spelling there um, so although the department has uh, got the memo like that they actually haven't specified that but in the department memo they also specify if both of those conditions are true so if so that's actually the one that you should check for first if else if if age is less than 4 or if age is greater than 6 please take note when you're using these ands and these ors your conditions must always be in brackets and we want that to be considered like one condition so that's why I put brackets around it and if the if deposit is equal to false remember to put your brackets around your conditions when you're using ands and ors and nots as well then result equals and they actually don't tell us how we must write this so deposit not paid I always say pained and incorrect age so that's what it looks like in the memo from the department. Now, please be wary. This is actually probably not going to work as well because if they haven't paid the deposit, then it's going to go straight away to this. So it never actually gets to this part, even if they are the incorrect age and they haven't paid the deposit. So this should technically be the first condition that we look at. That should be the first condition. I'm not going to stress too much about it because it doesn't actually work too well. Or they haven't actually specified it. So I'm actually going to take it out. I'm just adding the code so that you can see why they do that in the memo. If you are referring to the memo while doing this question. But that's probably why there are seven marks for this because that's where the rest of the marks would come from. So as I said, the examiners probably made a little mistake there. They are human as well, so they also make mistakes. So that's probably unfortunate that some people probably missed those marks because they didn't specify that in the question so remember just to recap quickly for that question this condition if you were going to do it must come ahead of these two otherwise it'll never get to these conditions because it'll be satisfied over there before it even gets to the dual condition okay so let's go to the last two quickly these two are nice and easy they're two small questions we must write the appropriate get method for to return the name of the applicant so obviously we're going to need that somewhere that's the accessor method that's simply a get name so that's a function so let's go up here to our function function get name and that's going to return a string because I know our name is a string and it's really as simple as pressing control shift C and in the function part all we're going to do is a result is equal to F name the field that we are returning from our private fields that's how we access our private fields and the other one that they asked us to do was to write a get field or get method for the date of birth so that's quite easy as well so we just do exactly the same thing function get dob is what I'll call it they don't actually tell me what I, could, what I should call it 
so that's going to return a string because remember our DOB or date of birth is also a string and all that this is going to do is it's going to say result is equal to if DOB and that's it if you're not too sure about some of these functions then all you have to do is go look at the um, second part of the OOP question see how they're going to be used and that should give you an idea of how the function should work always remember that when you do the OOP question that the that you're only dealing with one object by itself the program will handle many objects so don't stress about a text file with lots of data you just handle one object by itself in its individual piece then remember there's always be a constructor remember your private and public fields private must be where you declare your variables and only these can only be accessed from within the object and your public fields will be how we can use and get values from those private fields from outside of the object and then just remember when they talk about a method you need to decide am I returning something then make it a function if I'm not then I must do a procedure in part three of these of the videos um, we will work on the second part of this question which is how do we use this object in the actual question I hope you found this video useful if you want to see the other videos go to our YouTube channel youtube.com slash users slash Mr. Long Education subscribe to get all the latest videos with regard to CAT and RT if you're considering these subjects go to it also like or go follow us on our Twitter page and you can see when new videos are uploaded